Okay, good morning everybody and welcome to the second webinar uh, in the framework of the SubSub project for mobility practitioners. Great to see so many of you online. We'll wait a couple of seconds still. There are still people joining in. Okay. Okay. Let's start. So, one more time, welcome to this uh, SumSub webinar, the second one in our series for mobility practitioners. And today, with the very important topic of data collection for sustainable urban mobility plans. My name is Esther Kreutz. I work for the Union of the Baltic Cities, Sustainable Cities uh, Commission. We're based in Finland. And together with my colleague, we work in the SumSub project and organize different learning activities for mobility practitioners. I'll tell you a bit more about that soon. I hope um, you can all see my screen. And uh, I would like to start now with a few technical information to you. So uh, most of you I see have dialed in with the computer. Um, it's also possible to dial in with phone in case there are some uh, technical problems or you have some connection issues. So it's also possible to dial in with phone. You should have gotten that information. You are all um, in listen only mode for now. So everybody is muted. Um, with that, we want to uh, avoid a lot of background noise and um, um, yeah, just want to give, give the presenters to uh, the, the, the chance to have their, their quietness, so to say, and, and ensure that everybody can participate uh, with a good connection. So you're all muted um, um, as a default for now. You can, though, raise your hand. As you can see on the slide, there is a button where you can raise your hand. And even more important, there is the function to ask questions. So whenever you have a question arising during the webinar, please add it to this question function that is explained on the slide as well. So you can write down your question. That makes it a bit more easier for us to, uh, to, to manage. And we will take up all your questions during the webinar and latest in the very end when we have the question and answer session. This can be questions to, um, to the project and to the learning activities that I'll be presenting. It can be also questions about the content for the presentations, of course. So uh, add your questions there. Then we have a chat function also if there are any other issues that you would like to to get um, a bit quicker feedback for example we try to be quick you can use the chat as well we will have a few uh, polls coming up during the webinar uh, that's uh, something that we like to do to engage with you to get a little bit more input about who you are and um, yeah how your situation is with the topic so there will be a few uh, polls coming up where we would like to ask you to answer but uh, I'll I'll explain that when it happens. So today's webinar, uh, this is our team for today. Um, and my colleague Maya Rusanen from working for the same organization as myself will have a presentation. And then we will have, uh, we have our city case example presented by Andreas Nordin from the city of Malmö in Sweden. So that's us today. And topic wise, as I said, we will talk about uh, data collection for SUMPs. Um, I will now first start to introduce a little bit more to the project sums up and to different learning activities for mobility practitioners that we are organizing and that are still coming up and might be interesting to you. Then um, my uh, colleague Moya will have an input presentation on the topic on data collection as the backbone for SUMPs. And then we have um, a lot of time to hear to a great city case example from the city of Malmö. City of Malmö is uh, one of our partner cities in the SumSub project. And uh, Andreas will present how they use the uh, data for planning uh, their sustainable mobility measures and how they implement an innovative, a new way of like data collection method in their city. And after that, we will take up your questions and then um, we'll wrap up the webinar. Um, yeah, so we will start now soon, but before we start, uh, we'll take uh, a little poll because we would like to know also um, 
who you are that are now part uh, that you have are now participating in our webinar. So we have the question about what our organization do you represent? Um, so take some moment to please answer that. So we can get a bit better overview about yeah our participants who you are. Mm-hmm. So I think we have stable numbers. So I will close this poll and share it with you. So we have 33% uh, municipal administrations, 15% consultancies, 17% educational institutions, 4% NGOs, and 30% others. That's of course also would be interesting to know to open up that a little bit more. Um, but it, this already gives us a, a, a good overview, a little bit like who are who are the persons now that found the webinar and are now participating. Thanks a lot. Um, and now we come uh, straight to the next one because um, as our as our topic um, is uh, our, our sustainable urban mobility plans, we of course would also like to know of those of you who are representing cities or, or local authorities. What um, is the status of sustainable urban mobility plans in your uh, in your municipality? So those of you who are working for a city, um, you could answer that as well. So either you don't have an SUMP at all, you are preparing the first one, you are implementing the first one, or you have already prepared more, two or more. That's also interesting for us to see. Okay, that's really interesting to see. I think numbers stay stable, so I close it so you can have a look as well. Um, so we have actually the majority, or like 32% that have um, pre that have prepared two or more SUMPs. So that's really interesting. Um, and then otherwise quite a similar, or well, actually quite a similar uh, distribution. Well. Thanks a lot. Um, that's interesting for us to know. Anyway, welcome to everybody. Um, and now I would like to switch my presentation to the next one and would like to introduce to you first um, a little bit about the project, in case you, you're not familiar with it yet, and about the different learning activities that we organize for mobility practitioners. So <clears throat> the SAMSA project is a project within the Civitas initiative, and our aim is to mainstream the SUMP concept and to um, disseminate it and, and uh, promote it throughout Europe for uh, local authorities to embrace it as a strategic approach for their mobility planning. And we especially have a focus on those countries and areas where the take up so far is quite low, um, but that those in those uh, areas where there's a, a, yeah, a high demand for sustainable mobility planning. <clears throat> the aim of the project um, is that we train around 100 cities very intensively, and then we organize uh, capacity building for around 200 mobility practitioners. And that's one of the activities where you are right now. Perhaps you wonder, a mobility practitioner, like, what is that actually? That's something that we define for ourselves in the project. Um, because the 100 cities that we train, what I just mentioned, so these are really local authorities that are targeted. And we also want to provide capacity building for individuals, for mobility practitioners, as we call them. So that's all of you, most likely, or very. I'm very sure that you all are mobility practitioners. So um, it's about individuals either representing cities or uh, municipalities, can be um, representing uh, yeah, academic institutions, consultancies, uh, NGOs. But of course, the common, um, the common uh, issue is that you are either at least interested in sustainable urban mobility planning or you're working practically with SUMPs. 
or you're perhaps working for a, um, as a consultant for a, a municipality or have otherwise uh, connections to, to 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 cities that you work work with them um, mobility practitioners for us also include um, civil servants or practitioners from like very related um, areas like urban planners or architects everybody who has something to do with this topic um, yeah so and for these people and for you we are organizing a variety of different activities because we realized that um, that uh, the SUMP cycle and going through the cycle can be a challenge or can it be I think it, it is for, for many cities and because there are many different ways how you can embrace the concept how you can set up an SUMP it, it's different for each municipality it's different for each city but of course there are those common elements that we all have and even if it might sound complicated we have developed in our project and in many other projects a lot of guidance so there is a guidance and support available in different ways and this is what we would like to uh, present to you today so if you have the challenge um, of of uh, planning or implementing an SUMP or you just yeah want to have more guidance and and ideas how to how to approach this this concept um, we hope that we our activities can help you on that so within our project the some sub project we have um, different activities we have or we have had the so-called SUMP learning programs these were those targeted for those hundred cities and unfortunately I cannot promote it anymore because those calls have been closed so we are right now running or we, we are now have now just uh, selected the last um, 20 cities for our last program um, the programs have been running 2018 and now this year 2019 and they were these kind of uh, intensive um, learning programs but those are now unfortunately closed what is still available are uh, e-courses webinars and of course a lot of guidance materials the e-learning courses cover uh, all kind of different aspects related to SUMP and um, and are related to the different phases and steps in the cycle and there are self-study courses and they're available anytime so you uh, can um, you can uh, yeah go and and have a look at the material and and go through the material in your own pace you can do some exercises that are there there are some uh, case examples from cities that are, are very experienced with SUMP uh, tips for guidance and further reading etc and those concrete exercises but you can they're not moderated so they're self-standing and you can uh, you can uh, make the, or do those courses in your own pace and they are available at the uh, mobilityacademy.eu uh, and you find all the information also on our website uh, sums-up.eu so these are the course topics um, so there are all together seven courses and the first three courses are online already the next um, set of courses will be online in the middle of March so you're welcome to have a look also on then on the website you find some bit more uh, description about that and then the webinars that's where you are now as i mentioned in the beginning this is the second webinar we had the first one in december and we still have four webinars to come um, so in the webinars we focus on different aspects of the SUMPs we uh, introduce different tools and guidelines and showcases from the cities um, that can be our partner cities or other cities that uh, all across europe that have um, that they have provide good examples on those on this topic. Um, so we are now today, and the next webinar will actually take place in exactly a month about measure selection for SUMP. Um, yeah, so you can already note that down if that's an interesting topic for you. Otherwise, please follow uh, the website or our social media. There we always uh, announce all the events regularly and well in time. Additionally, to all the online activities, we also organize national workshops. Um, we have organized already uh, quite a number of them, but um, there are two left uh, in case you are from those countries. We'll have still one workshop in Italy, in Rome, in June. That date will still be defined and we'll, we'll find, you will find the date as well on the website. And in Spain, in San Sebastian on June 5th this year. So if you're, organ if you're interested in those um, 
those uh, national workshops, which will be conducted in, in Italian and in Spanish. Um, please follow the website for more information. There will be more information coming soon. So in those national workshops, we focus a bit more on like the national circumstances and there are different examples from then Italian or Spanish cities uh, sharing their experience. Then, of course, uh, in our project, we also produce a number of reports and policy recommendations that are available um, on the website. Um, it's, uh, for example, we have the, an, a really good overview on the status of SGMPs in the EU member states. Um, and there you find also some ideas what kind of a support mechanisms you have in your country, for example. And then we also have a number of guidelines for different um, for cities that are on different levels, like starting with an SUMP, um, kind of advancing in their SUMP, and already or and those that are I'm sorry that are already advanced and really want to innovate their their practice. Mm, and then we have also a very a comprehensive guidance on the SUMP action plan. So all these documents you find on the website and are hopefully helpful to you. Yes, so um, that was it about the project and the possibilities for you to continue after that webinar. Thank you for that. And uh, then I would like to pass on to my colleague, uh, Maya. Um, and her presentation. So, presenter. Yes. Hello, everybody. We'll just open up my presentation and the video camera as well. So good morning or a good day, depending on your location. So my name is Maya Rusanen. I work as, as the project coordinator at Union of the Baltic Cities Sustainable Cities Commission. And I will tell you today a bit more about the data collection and also preparing broader analysis of the mobility situation as, as part of the overall SUMP process. <clears throat> and I hope that this SUMP cycle is familiar <clears throat> to all of you already now. It starts from preparing the self-analysis and and checking what is the local context that you're working with and identifying different stakeholders. But today we will focus on the analysis of the mobility situation and especially then the data collection as, as well, which then helps to identify the problems and opportunities for your city. And as Esther said, there are as many ways to set up an SUMP as there are different cities so and the SUMP need to reflect the local needs capacities and the specific planning context context so then therefore you also have to really know the local mobility situation as well that help you then to set the targets for your own for your own cities like SUMP and in order to know where you want to go and how you will get there, you first also need to know where you're currently standing. <clears throat> and analyzing the mobility situation and developing scenarios for future mobility situation is really the last step of in this phase that we call preparing well in the SUMP cycle. And this really provides a good basis for setting goals in a rational and transparent way for the planning. And then to understand better the local mobility situation, a thorough analysis is really needed on the problems and opportunities in the field of mobility and transport. And this is really important milestone because it feeds into the development of scenarios that then help to improve our understanding what mobility could look like in future and what will happen if some measures are taken or are not taken. But as part of the, <coughs> sorry, losing my voice, analysis of the mobility situation, it's also good to analyze the existing transport and also related strategies to really have a good picture of what is the current status and know your local context that you're working with. And then, of course, collect different kind of data with different met methods and process data as well. 
And in urban mobility and transport, the knowledge related to the problems and opportunities is often very fragmenting and might be a bit incomplete as well. So like a pieces of puzzle, you need to put this data and information together to really have a good picture of what is going on and what are really the key problems for your city. And you might to need also collect data from different sources and maybe cooperate also <clears throat> with other organizations to get the data that you need. And of course, the analysis when you do it, it should be as comprehensive as possible, but it also, of course, need to be manageable within the given resources. So if there is a lack of data or resources to then gather data to fill in the gaps, a more qualitative review can be also used. And this might be especially helpful for like smaller cities with a bit more scarce resources. And then, of course, the overall goal is to really create a coherent picture which describes what is going on and which problems are related to each other as well. <clears throat> And the SUMB guidelines propose some steps that you need to take when you prepare analysis of the mobility situation. So first is to go to identify and analyze the key planning documents and process, procedures and policies relevant to your local planning context, context. And it is important to have also good overview of the related strategies, because often Problems related to urban transport planning are because of lack of coordination between different policies and authority levels that goes far beyond integration of the transport mode. For example, co coordination with environmental protection, social inclusion, health and safety issues and education as well. So it's important to know also the other strategies. Then the second step is to identify the data that is already available and assess the quality and accessibility of this data. And it's good to use really all the opportunities to get data. Would there be relevant data already available in some other sector, for example? Could you get it from some other organization or cooperation partner? Or has there been like research done? Or could you cooperate? with universities or other research institutions, especially if you have scarce resources for the data collection itself. Uh, then the next steps is then to retrieve the available data, synthesize the content, and then collect additional data to fill important gaps in your data. And for cities that have lack of sufficient data, still a minimum set of data of urban transport and mobility and also as well on the other related areas that influence SUMP should be collected. But this then data set should be, of course, fitted into the local context to enable really an honest status analysis. And if sufficient data is not available, you can start what you have, but it's always good to prepare a plan how you plan to close the data gaps. And data can be collected with different means. For example, trends in the number of pedestrians can be counted by annual counts or then household surveys and so on. But of course, the choice of the method really depends what kind of resources do you have, also how big or small is the city, and then what kind of level of reliability of the data is required. Then fourth step is to choose the most appropriate indicators. For example, if the key objectives is to improve road safety, so then you of course need to have data on the number and severity of crashes, as an example. And then <clears throat> fifth step is to identify possible expected and unexpected events that might influence might influence long-term decisions. For example, shortage of fossil fuels that then influences the planning of the whole mobility system. And then as the last step, together with the key stakeholders, it is also important to involve <clears throat> different stakeholders to prepare baseline analysis that really identifies and prioritizes the key problems that your city's SUMP should be addressed. 
and it it is recommendable to have really the stages as as quantified as possible because then it's also later more easy to evaluate the progress and there are some issues to take into account when planning the collection on data and we will luckily hear a really good example from Malmö how they are collecting data and using it later but collecting reliable data is really essential to estimate demand for potential transport services and it's very difficult to plan if the data is not reliable or if sufficient data is not available because it then of course makes it difficult to prepare transport models that help to predict future problems and evaluate how effective different kind of interventions can be. Then as you know data can be collected with different types of methods so it is good to consider whether additional methods are needed what are already in place would additional counts or surveys need to be implemented or could you maybe use also crowdsourced data possibly but of course it's always good to take into account the resources what you have and really what is the actual need <clears throat> then as mentioned before Usually data related to transport and mobility can be found in different locations. So that also might, might require cooperating also with number of internal and external organizations. And what can, can cause sometimes problems for the cooperation is the confidentiality issue of the data. So these issues really need to be handled carefully to avoid any cooperation problems and it is really important to like tell why the data is required and what kind of benefits can be generated if the data can be then used and of course accurate how the data is collected and shared and it is of course important also to get get the permission from the partners to use the data and like really that they are willing to share also their data and when collecting data all modes of transport should be considered including also pedestrian cycling trips because otherwise there is a risk of ignoring short and non-motorized trips which are also very important then in the end there are some some key recommendations that should be taken into account when preparing the mobility analysis and collecting data. So sustainable mobility data and information on current and future urban mobility is really critical when it comes to successful development of SUMB. And of course, it is good to pay attention to the quality of data, reliability and accuracy as well. And in the process, you need to be able to prepare the baseline, a mixture of qualitative and quantitative data as well and maybe it is good to consider some new ways to collect data but of course always make sure that you use the existing existing data at the highest level as possible and also what should not be forgotten is how to really analyze and present the data because this is also really important to consider how you present your findings also to the wider public to get really support to SUMB and the SUMB measures later so also the public should understand what is really the situation and then of course baseline clear baseline should be development against which then progress can be later measured and then you hopefully you have heard about the SUMB slogan planning for people so also the citizens should be focused focus and take it into account when the in data collects and not only the vehicles. So also try to find out what is influencing sit, like people's travel behavior and how are they how are they moving and what is what influences this. And then of course involve all relevant stakeholders in collection and processing the data. And as well as the final point in order to gain consensus at the larger scale on different urban mobility issues it is very important to use the 
data as key factor for proper argumentation. It's very important to bring really the facts on the table, especially also when discussing with politicians to get political support for the SUMP, which is really a success factor for the successful implementation of SUMP. But this was my presentation now, and if you want to learn more about analyzing the mobility situation and get tips for data collection, as Esther mentioned, we have in the Mobility Academy, we have these e-courses, and there is one e-course is focusing on the analysis of the mobility situation. And then, of course, we have the SUMB guidelines where you can see the SUMB process, process as well, so you can check these links. But thank you for from my side and if you want to also follow what is happening in the project, follow our Twitter. We have really active Twitter account and that's an easy, easy way to keep updated on the new events as well. But thank you. Okay, thank you Maya. Um, I see that there are already some questions coming in. First, some general questions about the presentation that I had and now also uh, related to your um, presentation. But I would still um, like to actually take those and answer them and discuss them in the very end so that we can uh, we can uh, have them all in the, in the question and answer session. And uh, so for all of you, again, that if you have a question, please type it in to this question pane. Uh, I've been also answering some questions already so you can you should be all able to see the answers to um, the the general questions and then we take the the other questions um, later on so I would like to now first uh, give the floor to uh, Andreas from the city of Malmö to present their approach to data collection in Malmö Uh, yes, hello. Uh, uh, I think I hope you can see my screen now. And uh, so my name is uh, Andreas Nordin. I'm a traffic strategist for for the city of Malmö, and I, uh, I will be talking a little bit on how we do in uh, in Malmö when we do our uh, traffic service surveys and uh, how we use our data for planning and how we collect it. So. Uh, Thank you, Maya and Esther, for, for having me. And, and I should say that uh, Maya made a very good, uh, thorough uh, explanation of, on how, how you should, how you can use uh, data and how you can uh, collect it. So, so this is just one example. So, so you can, uh, yeah, you can, you can listen to this and then, uh, but the, the theory is already laid out by Maya in, in, in a much, I think maybe an easier, more uh, way structured way. But um, so I'll start talking about how we collect data, and then I'll talk a little bit how we how we use it as well. And you can come back with questions. So uh, at first, uh, Malmo uh, is it's a city in the south of Sweden. The red dot is is in uh, Malmo, and it's just uh, 20 minutes away from the capital of uh, Denmark, Copenhagen, uh, and not so so far away from the rest of Europe. And a little bit about Malmo. Uh, Malmo is uh, Sweden's uh, third largest city. It's growing fast, and uh, we have uh, a lot of foreign-born uh, and uh, many. Uh, um, languages are spoken here. It's about 320,000 inhabitants uh, currently in Malmö. But uh, if you count the entire region with Copenhagen and, and uh, the rest of this part of south part of Sweden, it's 3.8 million inhabitants. Uh, and uh, we have 1.3 million on the Swedish side. So so it's, it's a big... Uh, in, in Swedish measures, anyway, in Scandinavian, it's really a, a, a densely populated area, uh, and we have a, a 250,000 companies uh, and 14 universities in, in this area. So, 
so uh, how do we how do we plan traffic? How how do we manage our traffic planning? Uh, so in in the, the center of this this uh, this graph is supposed to show uh, the the planning documents that we that we use as a foundation. So this this is the sum SUMP is in the, in the, in the blue blue. Uh, circle in the middle and and above that we have the comprehensive plan that's uh, the the big picture for all planning that goes on in the city and the the the, the SUMP is the the translator that can translate the 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 big strategic um, um, comprehensive plan into the 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 more detailed pedestrian programs and the bicycles programs and so on and the action plans for noise and air pollution so so this is how it all fits together um, and and uh, why why i'm here today and why why uh, this uh, webinar is arranged it's it's a part of this uh, sums up that we are as uh, esther mentioned we we are one of the the cities, participating cities. And we have, in that sums up, we have three commitments uh, and that, that I will talk about a little bit in the later in the presentation. But just to mention what's our part in sums up, we, we do a travel survey and we do a new and traditional and we do a comparison. I'll get back to that. We do a computer model uh, and analysis and we do uh, we do this a new way. We try to make it target-based. I will talk a little bit about that. This is uh, this is really interesting, but I'm not the technical expert on this, so it, it's uh, hard for me to go into the details. But I'll talk. Uh, I'll get back to it as well. And then we do a police uh, SUMP, uh, a mobility plan for for Malmo and the uh, 11 municipalities around closest to Malmo. So so this is also something. It's really important with the data collection because uh, all these municipalities they have different um, different policies, uh, different uh, structure, different uh, some companies areas and some uh, just populated areas. But we can all uh, talk the same language when we talk about uh, numbers and data because uh, this is. Uh, the same for all for all the, these municipalities. So it's it's the cornerstone of building a the poly SUMP is the data collection and how you use it. Uh, so how do we monitor uh, traffic in Malmo? Then <clears throat> we do it we do it in in three ways. Uh, we we count traffic. It's basic traffic counting, and we do the travel survey and we do the modeling so so and we try to add these three measures and and then uh, so we get the big picture and uh, I this usually a question that comes up so I'll try to answer it before it comes up uh, we, we have a budget about uh, 170 thousand euros uh, per year for for this uh, manual and mechanical data collection and we do a collection in the spring uh, from the end of uh, March to, to the beginning of June and, and then in the autumn, uh, August to November. And we do the collection uh, mainly on Tuesday to Thursday because with the travel uh, tend to vary a lot on, on Mondays, Fridays and, on, of course, on the weekend. But this is something we are working with because we want to also get this our main concern is that the work-related uh, trips, but we also want to get a bit bigger, uh, better picture of the uh, the uh, how do you call it? yeah the, the the trips outside of work hours. So so uh, th this actually shows uh, our uh, our different sections that we use. So so in the picture to up to the left, you can see that. One section that we, we use as a counting section is, is the municipality border. So, so all traffic going into the municipality or out from the municipality has to pass this border somewhere. So, so this gives us a, a picture of how many people or how many uh, vehicles actually uh, pass this 
this border. And, and uh, then we have the, the, the center border. This is the most densely, part, densely populated and uh, inhabited part of uh, Malmö. Uh, so, so, so how many people go in and out from, from the city center? Um, and he, uh, here we also uh, try to count uh, and measure uh, bicycle and pedestrians, but it, it's, it's tricky. Uh, I'll get back to that. And then, and then we do the, uh, to the lower left, you can see that we do the north-south uh, section uh, to see how many people. This is also includes people going around Malmö on the, on the ring road. So they pass this section. So we see all the traffic passing through the municipality. And then we have the, the inner ring road section that shows uh, how many people go into the to the, the, the big uh, outer Malmö because we have two highways to have an outer highway and an inner highway and uh, so they so all this adds together but uh, of course this, so I've added them all together in, in one slide here and uh, uh, of course the same same traffic can pass many of these sections so you can just you can't just use them as a, add all these sections together and get the, the amount of traffic, but uh, they all give different uh, pictures on on where people travel, how they travel, uh, how they use the uh, the opportunities of, of the city. This is very useful for for us. So uh, this data is collected in in uh, mainly in, through mechanical data collection and. Uh, so we have built-in tubes in the roads uh, that re register uh, passing vehicles, the weight and uh, speed and, and direction. Uh, where we don't have the, the, these built-in tubes, we use the, the rubber tubes. And as you can see to the, to the right in the picture, this uh, technician installing a rubber tube. Uh, so they are there for, for, the, for the measuring uh, months. Uh, and, and then, they, but they, they have basically the same uh, uh, profile. It's just uh, they, it's, they're more sensitive in wintertime and so on. But they have the same, uh, they collect the same data as the built-in tubes. Uh, and, but it's just, uh, you have to make sure that they are installed properly because the distance between the tubes are, are, are showing the, the, the speed and, and so on. So it's, you have to have, uh, good personnel that do the same. If they're going to do a mistake, they have to do the same mistake every year so we can follow it <laughs> uh, through through the years. And, and then we can use radar and video analysis. And this is our main way to use uh, for uh, to get uh, data on, on pedestrians and, and um, uh, bicycles. It's hard to use tubes that way so we so we use uh, so we use this is an example it's a, a bridge in Malmö where we in this in the central uh, uh, channel uh, so we, we have cameras and they uh, show different uh, different angles to, and then they compare the data to each other uh, through a computer and then uh, we get uh, the output of, of the pedestrians and, and the bicycle. So it is smart cameras. The problem, the main problem with this is with, with the law about the GDPR, the, the personal data, we cannot have data that's uh, identifiable. So, so the picture on the right here, we don't really get that picture. We can just, the, the, the computer translate it to raw numbers. <clears throat> so we cannot get the actual filming for this purpose, um, but we managed to get an uh, an uh, uh, D what do you call it? unidentified data from it. But uh, it's something we we're working on to improve this all the time. And uh, the the problem with this is also that we need some kind of verification because all this uh, computer processing. Uh, is just gives us raw data. We want to make sure that this is correct. So then we, as a supplement, we use manual collection of data. 
And this is really uh, something you need to have reliable uh, personnel, but also it's of course very expensive to have a lot of personnel running around the city. So here we have the, we try to make use the most use of the most reliable persons in the city. And we use the, the, the re retire, retired people mainly and, and some students as well, uh, because uh, um, they the, often glad to do some extra work and and uh, and on a nice day like this it can be uh, it can be quite nice to en enjoy uh, uh, the weather and and uh, count traffic so th the device used is you can see to the right is just an easy easy device they just uh, uh, push the button of, of uh, the vehicle passing and then so we get we we do this at at some control points just to verify the the, the computer generated analysis. And uh, then this is something really uh, really important for for us, and that we do uh, every five years we do a big travel survey the entire south part of uh, of uh, Sweden here Skåne or Skåne it's called. Uh, and uh, so, so Malmo is the the main uh, the main uh, target and the main goal for all these travels and uh, starting points and and uh, or or ending points of most travels. And this uh, this uh, is a really good uh, input for input for our infrastructural investment in the entire region. And uh, it's really good for us to monitor this change over time. Uh, not only Malmö, but the entire of the uh, region, and of course over to Denmark. And uh, so we had we made it last year, and the year before that was 2013. The problem is that it's so much data; it's being processed. So we are currently we haven't received the, the data or the the result yet from the from the uh, survey being made last autumn so we are waiting for it and we're expecting it in in a, in a few weeks so it's really exciting but uh i'll, I'll get back to 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 that because we, we this is something we've done a new uh, a new take on so uh how is it done then this survey every five, five years it's a quest uh, we have the survey and we ask the people participating to answer a question about the back background and mode of transportation and they uh, they make a travel diary you can choose to make it as a postal survey you get the form sent home to you or you can do the web based uh, just fill it out online um, and then we we send them two reminders uh, so we first at first we send a postcard uh, and then uh, we send the sur entire survey out again so, so hopefully we get a good response rate. So uh, actually I haven't gotten the, the, the response rate from 2018, but the uh, 2013 uh, we had, uh, we have the same selection now, I, I could say. We have ages 15 to 84 and last in 2013, it was 70,000 person in Skåne and 12,000 of those persons in Malmö and we've actually increased that uh, by I think 10 10 percent something like that the selection and uh, it's an unbound random selection and uh, in, in that in 2013 the number of answers were 25,000 almost 26,000 and we did an extra selection in Malmö so actually this has been proven uh, uh, popular because we got such good data from this ex extra selection so a lot of um, uh, smaller cities have also done an extra selection this uh, this on this take 2018 and this results in two databases uh, one that we have all the uh, answers the, from from the preconditions uh, and and then one database about the travels made and what's really exciting for us now, and hopefully we're holding arms for this to, to be good, uh, is that we made this travel survey uh, by uh, app uh, as well in 2018. Uh, so we, you could uh, 
we did the, the traditional survey with the with the online form or the or the postal survey and but you could also if, uh, download the app uh, as you can see in the picture uh, where it just had to have it the app running and and then it uh, register uh, all your trips being made and uh, you had to yeah you should just go in and check check that it's uh, correct and uh, so so these trips uh, it also it covers a lot of trips that you you might not consider a trip when you fill out the form because uh, we see a big uh, loss of data when it comes to the really short trips like going to the to the uh, uh, near by store just buying you know a packet of milk or something that's not not registered but this app everything is as long as the app is running everything is included and and this is also very interesting because it uses your uh, phone's gps so uh, you, we don't we don't only get the mode of transportation but we also get the the route choice <clears throat> so uh, we can, we can see which not only that uh, you take the bus but which bus line and not only that you go by bike but actually which bike route do you choose so th this is uh, of course, a big help for us if this, but we, this is also really important that it gives the same uh, data or, or comparable in some way. So this is uh, something we are, we are currently working on, analyzing this data and comparing it to the old survey. And our hope is uh, that we can abandon the old way of the paper survey, postal survey, and just do the, the the travel survey by app, and and I think this will also for those cities that haven't done the the survey because it might be too uh, costly. Uh, this is a much cheaper option, uh, just having people uh, using the app because uh, as a win-win uh, for for both the people using the city and for for of course us planning for the city. Uh, yeah. So, what what's the result then? Yeah, we get uh, we get a lot of uh, uh, different data to work with here from this uh, survey. We get the the background uh, factors. We ask them about the, the gender and age and the household composition, composition, and education and uh, income and so on. And then uh, we also get the description of of the participants and how what access. The transport access they have. Uh, so do they have a driver's license, car ownership? Do they have car access? Do they have bike access, a public transport card? And do they have any other benefits from work or, or you know, their study place, high school or so? And, uh, and then we get the, the of course, the, the, the main thing, the trips made uh, from the travel diary. Uh, so number of trips, distance travel, uh, and the average uh, travel uh, distance for each mode of transport and so on. And and with now with the app, as I mentioned, we get the choice of route. Uh, and uh, since this is for the entire uh, region of Scania, we also get the travel between the municipalities. So how how we use that? So th this is I'm so, I'm sorry, this is in Swedish, but this is something I, I think is interesting all this background data we, we get how people travel but we also get like the like the last uh, uh, columns the lowest one it says free parking do you have free parking at work and it says and, and it's a scary amount of uh, for me scary uh, it's it's a very high amount in 2013 that said that they had free parking at work and we uh, we have done uh, studies in our uh, parking policy that shows that this is the, the, the strongest regulate uh, mean to regulate the, the car usage. Uh, so, so, so it's really interesting. Uh, and this is this parking with a fee. Some, yeah, some people have that. And uh, so we get all this data about uh, so that, that we can take with us when, when we are planning the city and when we are talking to the companies and, and how how we think as a city and what is the sustainable way forward. 
and, and then of course we get uh, this interesting data on on how people travel based on if you're on uh, the, the yellow um, column is is woman and and man so we see that uh, the women tends to do a little more trips um, but uh, the men tend to do a little longer trips it doesn't actually show her and you see the age difference so uh, when do you travel the most uh, at what age uh, in Malmö uh, also good for us and and then we put all this together in 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 just to show the the development and this is this is mostly to show what we are doing what effect does it have on the on the development so this is just compared this is from an index of compared how to how everything was in 2007 and you can see that the population is steadily increasing the dotted line and and then uh, the car traffic has actually decreased a, a, over the years but uh, unfortunately we are seeing a little bit a trend that uh, the, it's uh, increasing a little again but and um, we see that uh, train traffic has has been has had a, a low period, but and now it's been increasing a lot, and that actually has to do with that during the the this low period in 2009 and 10, we were building a tunnel under the city, so so the train traffic was limited. But now, after this tunnel has been made, and the trains with two extra stops in the city and the trains that don't have to go around the city. It has been a huge payoff. So this is really important. We make a big investment. We have to know what's, hap what's happening with this and we need to communicate it easily to all the decision makers and, and people involved. And so, so and, and this shows, uh, the, and it's continuing like this, the um, train uh, commuting and, and so on and uh, of, and we see the same for bar, bicycles and, and buses and uh, yeah so this so we can pick out for every uh, different mean of transportation and you can see for, for cars we've been measuring car traffic since 1975 we thought this was the um, uh, big issue the cars or this was the most important but we realized in 2003 we started counting uh, bike traffic as well so um yeah i think uh, don't underestimate the effect of, of bike traffic and, and pedestrian traffic so it's important to and uh, to have all all the big the bigger picture and uh, why i haven't included the uh, public transport here is because this is a lot of the data from public transport we get or most data i should say is from the public transport provider uh yeah and then as a complement to, to this this other uh, uh, ways of counting we do the, the modeling and then and uh with, uh, this is computer big computer model with uh, the city divided into 350 something um, areas that all generate traffic depending on how many people living in them and uh, then we we can see how on depending on how what uh, what uh, measures we, we uh, plan to implement, we put it into the model, and then we, we get the result, a preliminary result from, from this uh, model. Uh, and we've been doing this for a long time, but now in, in sums up, we, we try to do it the other way around. We say, we need people to travel in this in a certain way. How, what, are, what uh, changes should we do in the infrastructure? What should we, uh, where should we put our money in in biking or, or bus or so on? Uh, so this is uh, it's. I think for smaller cities it's it's is quite costly, but for for a bigger city it's it's a big payoff. It's it's a it's a high high threshold, but it's it's a big payoff when when you from this model. It's a, a good usage of, of and plan for all the plans of, of infrastructural change. And, and we, we this uh, we, to, to the left you can see the, the, the computer uh, model and then the it's just an overview but you can see the wide the the wider the the line the more travels and you can of course go into the detail and see the exact amount and so on and but and to the right we we see the 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 
the survey result how people uh, say they travel and uh, they generate lines on so they are not necessarily uh, on the street some some lines here but they generate the, the data uh, and and then we compare the model and and uh, and uh, the travel survey and to to attune it to to make adjustments to for the for the uh, the model to to reflect reality uh, uh, so so this is you can't just do it once you have to constantly update it this is why it's it's good to have i have a colleague in the next room here working with just this computer modeling so and i think that's really important if if you want to do this computer it's hard to do just uh, once a year or something you have to constantly work on this uh, and then of course we talk to people yeah, we we we, can, we we data is good but we also need to get the opinion and this is also the decision maker they ask for us all the time yes this is all good but what does the people say so we did this in in the center city we talked to them what do you want but it's hard to have longer interviews uh, but we, we try to go out and talk and, and address the main issues. So th in the picture here, I have a policeman uh, also with us. Th it's not for, for security. It's for, for just, this is often the, the, the question that the citizens, the inhabitants have. They ask us, what's going on with the traffic? How, what's, how can I travel? And so on. And, and also uh, safety is a concern, especially uh, uh, in the inner city uh, so th that's why we have this try to plan this together and uh, this is also very uh, usable i think uh, a model that we've been uh, we've been working on at accessibility model for, for the entire city uh, in different areas and here we can see uh, how it's uh, the accessibility is rated actually uh, it's turned around from how it usually is. The, the, the blue is the best accessibility, and and the dark red is the, is the is the worst. So when we plan a, a residential area or, or we, we have an overview on this and what's acceptable, and th this this is uh, made up from a lot of uh, variables. So uh, we have uh, eight different. Um, uh measures on on how how uh, what means of transport do you have so uh, the travel time by by foot to 10 uh, targets or and travel time by bike and uh, travel quota we, we the between bike and car and uh, and the distance to to uh, public transport and and the quota of public transport and car and so on, and uh, and then we 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 the, the go the because we ask people or or actually we did this in the survey, but we also have from a, a partnership with the university, we we looked where they looked at what's most important for people living in, in uh, south of Sweden. So so the most important is that you have a preschool in the vicinity, a school. A health center, uh, a convenience store, a park area, a recreational area, and uh, playgrounds, and the city city life and and uh, and mall. So so this is all uh, weighted together and 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 uh, compared. So th this is also a computer generated model that we can update when when there's a change in in. Uh, uh, Build residential area. We're building residential areas. We're building uh, new bus lanes and so on. So, so the picture change and, and the, the the goal here is, of course, to make the uh, the, as the the map as blue as possible. Uh, so, why is all this so important to us? Why, why, how, how, why do we put all this money and effort into into this measuring? Uh, so maybe it's obvious, but uh, I'm, uh, I think it's good to remind yourself. So for us, the, we have these three um, uh, sustainability uh, pillars of sustainability, or we should call it two, three. So we, we have, of course, the economical sustainability. This is really important. What we do should be the most for the money. This is uh, our responsibility uh, to the taxpayers. But uh, uh, lately, or 
for, for some time we also work, work with the environmental sustainability. We need to the, uh, need to take care of the environment and make the living uh, environment as good as possible. And to able to know what what what, what effect uh, does it the, the things we do what effect do they have we need to measure and then social sustainability and it has a lot this is the trickiest one we have been working with the shortest time but social sustainability is a big part we see that it's a big uh, difference in in uh, in income in different parts of, of uh, our city and uh, we need to make uh, connect people to the workplaces and make sure that all citizens of Malmö have uh, the, the uh, as good service uh, and good uh, accessibility as possible. And, and we can see that the, we have from this goal oriented planning, we in, in 2013, we had uh, this, uh, uh, this, the, this shares of, of tra modes of traffic this model split, I should say. Yeah, and, and uh, we have 40% car, car of the trips are made by cars. And we see that in uh, 2030, we are closing in on 400,000 inhabitants in Malmö. And for, for Malmö to still be a sustainable city and uh, not uh, sprawl, we need to reduce the, the amount of car traffic to 30%. But the, the height of this pillar also shows the the amount of trips, the, the number of citizens times the uh, amount you're choosing a certain mode of transport. So you see that it's, it's the same amount of car trips, even though we have almost 100,000 new inhabitants. So this is, of course, a challenge. And that's why we need to monitor what we do, what have the most effect. And to just uh, to make this visible, we divided the city into 15 different areas. So we have different targets for all these areas because of course it's not the same in the city center. And uh, we have really good accessibility to, to uh, a lot of service and we have really good public transport and so on. And, and it's easy to go and walk and, and bike everywhere. But if you live outside of Malmö in the outskirts, then it's harder to, to have a good accessibility. So we need to have different goals for different parts of the city. Uh, so this is just, uh, oh, so many numbers, but uh, it just shows that different, like the city center, we have uh, a target of, we want 15% is the top row. We have a 15% uh, target of, of uh, car share. Today it's 25% hopefully a little better uh, after this survey when the result come in, comes in. But, and, and you can see how, how it's divided. And we, this is really helpful for everybody planning in the city. Because you can see if I'm going to build a, a, or start a company somewhere in the city, I can see going, maybe I'm, I'm starting in a company in the, in, uh, the area number seven, Fusia, and then I can see what, what's the preconditions. What, what's from the city how do they want my residents to to uh, to uh, transport themselves or 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 my uh, my employees so so this this is an easy way to 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 talk to to builders and and or everybody's that's an actor in the city uh, just breaking it down to to uh, to the, this model split for each area and I just include this sometimes in my presentation because I think it's really important to, to remember that uh, the public space that uh, I'm planning and uh, we are planning, it's not just about traffic. It's not just about transportation. I've been talking a lot about traffic, and tra but of course it's about the trees and it's about the, the restaurants and, and the, the living areas and the water management and the, uh, and the, the art and, and the, the lighting. Everything is the city should be livable, and it's it's not just a, a, a mode for transporting people from one point to another. But that being said, when we are transporting people, uh, it's good to do it in the most efficient way. So this is why 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 do are we so keen on getting people to to leave their cars at home or don't even buy a car and go by other means of transportation? This is why. If you look below the below the line, uh, you can see the squares representing the the average usage 
for every every uh, people going by uh, the different means of transportation. Someone uh, commuting by car, they use up an average of 22 square meters of the city. So they, they this is includes the parking space, <clears throat> and that's why it's in the streets and the parking space. And and but if you get the same people person to use the the bus instead of commute by bus, it, you, that person only uses two square meters. So we save 20 square meters of the city that we can use for something else. And this is why we need to, to for a sustainable Malmö with the, the, the continuing population increase to to be a, a healthy city, we need we need to get people to change their behavior. And this does not even include the, the health aspect. This is just the, the surface usage. Uh, and, and we have a, so that's why it's a, we, how we prioritize our street. Uh, but yeah, you can't use it. This is just a thought model, but so you can't use it in, in like from every street in the city, but uh, when you, as a thought model. And then of course we have to do the same for the people going in and out the community. This is not, Malmö cannot plan everything on its own. We need to have this a, a healthy relationship with our neighboring municipalities. And this is why we do the poly SUMP. Uh, so it's in, but it's the same uh, uh, same uh, thought train of thought as the, as the from Alma. And now we, we we also can use the for for the root data we can use the 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 root data for for even improving this even more and use where we have free space or or more space and uh, where we have. Uh, uh, where we already have a bad air or, or high noise level, we can plan uh, differently and get, and when we know when, what users uses which road, we can plan for this as well. Uh, and, and also we can use this for, for uh, to test our, our bike lanes uh, and, and where we're planning for, for this, use the data collected and then see how this changes uh, behavior. Of the, of the citizens. Yeah, I just include this just to show this is also something we need when, when we, we need to consider when we collect this data. Uh, we we need to consider how we have a lot of issues with with the uh, with the this uh, the air pollutions and and even more actually with with the noise pollution and so so this this data gives us. Uh, something to work with. How? Why is this? What generates this? And it's traffic is the number one, of course, by far number one uh, uh, noise uh, contributor. So we need to to work with with this. Uh, uh, of course, there's other measures than than reducing traffic, but but um, we need to have this in mind when we when we are talking about traffic. Uh, and I just want a quick overview how, how we change. So I think uh, I, I want to add as soon as possible the 2018 uh, sphere as well. But um, we, we did from 2003 to 2008, we did a big massive change from uh, getting people to use less the car for less trips and, and uh, but since then, the, the change has been a, a little slower because when we do a big uh, uh, a push in, in public transport, we see that a lot, we, we, we get a lot of pedestrians and bicycles users to use the public transport instead of the car users. But we also think that this is uh, something that would change over time. And it's very exciting to have this, this survey that can give you an answer to, to what you already presume but you might not uh, it might not be what we think we hope I, I, I'll have to come back to when we get the result and then you can get other interesting data from for us in Malmö this was uh, it's a very big change we see that the men and women travel tend to travel a lot uh, differently and uh, so this is our, our goal the women travel almost as our goal is today but the, the 
the men tend to travel a lot by car and and whether this is the, from uh, status or of the car or uh, why this is uh, or if it's also because it's included in some uh, companies I'm, I'm not really sure about but it, this is it's a good data to have with us when we talk to companies and especially male dominated companies and, and uh, so we need to work extra hard with with some users and, and and understand why the car is such a important part of, of their uh, travel uh, plans uh, so just to conclude uh, so so this uh, this is the opportunities uh, that we try to change from from uh, car usage of 40 percent to car usage of 30 percent while increasing the bike and and uh, public transport usage the, this gives us more accessibility and uh, it encourages people to go uh, we want to encourage people to go by, by foot and bicycle because it, this also includes increases the health care uh, and 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 reduce the health cost of the city and uh, creates a more livable city where, where we get, get more meetings and, and opportunities and uh, yeah so I just uh, thank you for, for listening to me I hope I wasn't too long uh, and uh, my email address is in in the bottom of the so you can mail me if there's any questions and also at the the web address you see uh, Tromp is actually Swedish uh, translation of SUMP you can find our SUMP in English uh, thank you very much thank you Andreas um, please stay with us a little bit with the, both your picture and your own your um, presentation so okay. if there have been some specific questions because there are a lot of questions <laughs> a lot of questions came up and we try to go through most of them um i'm just saying this already now in case we cannot do all of the questions or we cannot answer all the questions in the framework or in the time frame of this webinar we um we can answer them um in written form as possible or then andreas can give some 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 info as well and then we can provide them to you with the wrap-up email um, and i would like to say that as well so you will receive a link to a place where you find the recording and the presentations and then also um, you receive the answers on, on on the questions in a written form and also those that we don't manage to answer now perhaps there were several questions for uh, like a more general ones. So um, if you are more interested about the other activities, please check the, the Sums Up website and follow the, the our social media channels. The e-courses will be um, online until at least until the end of the project next year. So all the information about the other learning activities you find on the website. And otherwise, contact us. There's also a help desk uh, email address in our presentations and on the website that you can get in contact with us. We have answered a couple of questions already in written form in this uh, question pane, at least those that we could answer, um, both Maya and me. But now I would like to go um, to the questions that came now specifically to you, Andreas. Um, mm -hmm. And then let's see how far we get. I think some are a bit faster to answer. Some might uh, need some more explanation or just a reference to some other information. So. Um, one question that came up first was like, what is the difference for you between an action plan and a program? Oh, uh, the, the programs is more a strategic uh, document that is, outlines the, the how, how are we going to plan and, and then we, we, it doesn't have a set budget. The action plan has a budget and a, a number of measures that we are going to uh, uh, do. So, yeah. so uh, like yeah. quick answer. Program, yeah. Okay, I hope that answered that question. Then uh, there's a question about um, that uh, has come, I think, also last time when you had the presentation about if you pay the older people and students for the data collection and or do they volunteer? And if you pay them, how much do you pay? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have. We pay them, yes, we do, but it's it's uh, 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 I, I would say a minimum wage. It's it's a low uh, low cost. You you can't live of it it's just it's, it's an extra income yes uh, I'm, I'm sorry i don't have the numbers for it but we yeah. pay them something yeah. but i guess we can so it's not it's not only volunteering so they get something for it yeah yeah okay and then um there's the question if um are people available to make a travel diary i guess it means that so are there people volunteering to to have this travel diary? 
uh, this is the tricky part actually yeah the, so 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 people uh, are volunteering but it's uh, as you could see we had 37 percent uh, actually um, uh, answering and and uh, this was after this uh, a reminder and so on. so this is hard with, with the app we, we used to we to get them to use the the, the phone and the app we we, we gave them uh, uh, what you call a power bank so you get mm -hmm. something from just uh, 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 like a goodie uh, but otherwise we just uh, we try to it's this this is hard but we try to encourage them just by uh, making <laughs> to them to show with a minimum effort just to help us plan the city and it's working okay 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 um i don't know if you mentioned it now in your in your presentation but the question came up and i also don't remember now it's like did you have uh, what is the answer rate to the survey that you have like in general there was 37 percent so we, we hope it was, so it's about 35 37 has it it what that's what it's been so uh, Okay, yeah, so this 37%. Um, next question was like, have you tried a targeted travel service like based on certain demographic factors or car ownership or something like that, like more more targeted service? Uh, yeah, we have we have we do it uh, on on uh, also in areas. We, we, so we have yes, we have tried uh, and we target also uh, and. Uh, uh, car users and but this is uh, more difficult because we don't want to pinpoint people we don't may want to make people feel uncomfortable about their choices so we usually just do it in in uh, campaigns in mobility management campaigns we target certain but then we add like a little more uh, easy going element like we do this uh, how short how short is your most ridiculous car travel in yeah. that manner, usually, we, we, because it's hard to target. We don't want to, if we make people feel uncomfortable, they don't want to participate, of course. Of course, yeah. yeah. Well, but that's a good way to, to still also get the information and, 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 and uh, yeah, target them in a different way. Then there is a question that's something that also came to my mind, um, actually, when talking about the app, because I think uh, using apps in data collection is, um, Right now, it's a very common thing, or there's many cities that develop apps, etc. Uh, but have you thought about um, the target group for the apps? Like, there's the question: Don't you lose certain social groups, for example, elderly people? Yes, yeah, we do, we do. Uh, that's why it's so important this comparison. We, we, that's why we have to we probably. I don't know, but probably we have to do uh, next time as well. Next uh, in five years as well, we do the the double. Uh, survey we do the both the app and and, uh, and the traditional because as as yes as expected we, we lose a lot of uh, of uh, elderly people mm -hmm. and and because uh, otherwise we have this is the most easy when you do the postal survey this is the most easy group to target the the, the elderly people they tend to uh, be willing to share their point of view on and and write this travel uh, diary um, so I'm uh yes it's it's true it's a problem we need to we need to uh, overcome this yeah mm. or at least like having it in mind always there's something some groups might be missing um then the next question was also about the app did your organization develop the app for the survey 2018 is it available for other regions yeah, I'm sorry. We, I would like to say yes, but no, we didn't. There was a consultancy that uh, they, they, because it's too. This is too uh, expensive for us to to develop, and and you need to update it. It's a lot of uh, cost. So so uh, the consultancy they they can uh, sell it to us and of course other users as well. And but the the, the good thing about that is that we have a little competition about it. So I mean, you can if someone develops. A better app we can use that next next uh, uh, next time so so i'm thinking i think that's the best for 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 cities and municipalities actually to let the consultancies uh, develop the app and if uh, the person who was asking this i mean if you're interested in this i think it's still possible to look more into that app and perhaps also get in contact if you want to know now specifically about that app or about the consultancy that made this app 
Um, the next question, well, that I think was answered now about if you used any incentives for motivating people to engage and participate in the travel diary survey. So um, you said they got some small goodies or like uh, the power bank and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's really a, a way how it's mostly done in cities that you kind of, yeah, have to think about like what would be what would be uh, something, yeah, perhaps something except paying them for something of course like something to engage people people into that. Hmm? do you have some comments though on that no uh, no no i think no, it, it's good and we, we try to the problem is that also sometimes that uh, certain uh, parts of community are really active like in malmo we have a lot of active bikers and they are really keen to be a part of this so but then we get so we get really good data on on how people bike but we want to the diverse picture this is good but we cannot use all this data because we have to just select some some of this but otherwise it's uh, yeah we try to use the good goodies but it's of course it's a cost uh, uh, cost thing we cannot yeah. give out uh, so much yeah 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 um then there's a question that i think is also very interesting like do you have you realized is there a certain data that you would find very important to have but that are missing is there something that you are actually you cannot collect that you wouldn't need to have? Uh, no, uh, good question. I don't know. Uh, no, not that I can think of, no. Okay, not right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, then the, there's a question I think quite um, mm, related to your graphic of the model split about the bike, uh, bike usage, the, like why the bike uh, usage was going down. I don't know if you have an answer for that. I think the the, the difference was quite small, but yes, and mainly, yeah, mainly we find that it's because we have such a big improvement in public transport. The train traffic now with new train stops and the and the bus traffic is has improved a lot in Malmo over the last ten years. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, this has re reduced the car uh, or the bike uh, usage uh, by uh, one percentage but still our goal for bike usage for 2030 is to raise it by eight percent so it's uh, it's a big mm. big uh, target yeah. mm. okay um then there's some interest to hear more about the target uh, based computer modeling that's i guess quite a i don't know if you can answer on that now or Mm, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try. But because this is for me also uh, not, I'm not an expert, as I said, but uh, it's, and I think it's a very good way to use it because in, in Sweden we have the, the, uh, the big uh, road uh, official agency. They, they, they have their own uh, target, or, or I mean, their, their own. Uh, uh, model data traffic usage model and so this is why we need to have something yes they but it only shows how people use it today and how people will use it in 10 years or 15 years uh, and we need something to to uh, show how how we want them to use but it's it's tricky because we need to uh, know a lot about things that we don't know yet how many will have a driver's license in 20 years for example because uh, usually it's better to make these models. I mean, 10 years is a short span when you talk about computer modeling because we need to have big structural things and that, uh, to make the big differences. So uh, it, it's tricky, uh, but uh, and I'm, I'm not sure uh, how, how to answer it. We try to, we try to give a, 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 our picture of it to the sums up, but we haven't really made the, the final uh, evaluation yet on, on, on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's also, it's quite a big, uh, big topic now to just, uh, just uh, talk, talk about this, this uh, like uh, specifics. And I, I would uh, also like to encourage you, like if, if you have very uh, detailed questions, um, it might be also easier to perhaps just uh, get in contact with Andreas directly or get in contact with us and we connect you and you could then connect them with the, with your colleagues that have, um, that could perhaps give answers to that as well. So I'm now yeah. looking a little bit, um, we have a lot of very um, broad questions as well, but I'll have a look now here what we can still answer. Um, there is somebody would like to know about which software was used for traffic modeling that you were showing. Is there... 
Uh, it, it, it's. I can't remember the. the it's, it, for us, it's called M M E E M M E. But I'm I'm not. Uh, and then we also use Dynamic and and CapCal. It depending on the on the scale. So CapCal is the is the just one intersection, and Dynamic is a the intermediate size and then we do the M. But I'm not sure, I, I can ask, I have to come back what's what's the international uh, yeah. uh, name for it. Okay, but perhaps yeah, we can come back with a few things also then in written form afterwards. Um, there was a question about um, about freight delivery and uh, so somebody com commented that you cannot make an SUMP without including freight because people need goods. That perhaps that would be interesting to hear from you still. Like, what is your approach to to uh, to that? I I totally agree, and it, this has been uh, a big uh, issue for us when when we were doing our last SUMP. Uh, this was something that we had uh, a lot of discussion about, and we 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 have doing been doing uh, uh, tryouts uh, to, with, with the different uh, freight. Um, uh, companies, but it's uh, hasn't been. We we have a, a standalone freight uh, program, but it's it's hard because it's managed by so many private companies. Uh, so we haven't set. We don't have the goals actually because we don't know where we started. So we're still working. This is something we're working with uh, right now a lot mm -hmm. with with this uh, freight question. Okay. Yeah, there are still a lot of questions, actually, and um, I would like to pick out now one last one um, before we end the webinar. Um, yeah, there's the question about in which department in Malmö municipality do you develop the SUMP, or are there several departments working together? The, uh, there are seven. I think this is a good question because this is a key key uh, uh, to the success of the SUMP is that. It has to be broad and developed by uh, several um, uh, departments. We, we made it on the streets and park department. We, we were project managers, but it, we included the city building uh, office and and, uh, and the environmental office and, and so on. Because and also it was adopted by the, by the highest political uh, order. So yeah, otherwise it's hard to work. It has to be on the same political scale as uh, the comprehensive plan. I think yeah. in the end. Yeah. For have to 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 have effect. Yeah. 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 And I think that's a good uh, ending. Also, again, like some, uh, all the bit summarizing up, like what uh, the SUMP is about. It's a lot. It's uh, one of the core issues is about the cooperation and within the city administration to actually make it work, and to uh, to yeah, see that it has effect. Um, we have still a lot of questions open. I would now propose that we. Um, we have them saved, we take them, we will um, get back uh, with Andreas to perhaps see if you can provide us with a few questions in, or like answer them in a written form. And then we will include all these questions and answers to the wrap up email that you will receive and we will um, upload it uh, with all the other material, as I said, because um, yeah, I don't want to now exceed the time too much so we don't lose uh, all the participants. Um, before, so, well, first of all, thank you, Andreas, very much one more time for this really comprehensive um, presentation and all your input and all your answers. Um, I would like to now still uh, do a short uh, poll um, in the end, which are uh, interesting for us because, as I mentioned, we will have some more webinars coming up. So we would like to know uh, what kind of webinar topics are you um, interested in? So please take a moment to I hope this is now visible. No. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, number stays stable, so I will now share that with you. So um, these are the results. Um, as you know, the one about the measure, measure selection is already covered in the next uh, webinar, 
on the 20th of March. And uh, this is just interesting for us to see also like where to put our focus on and perhaps also repeat an, a, a topic or something. So um, thank you for this input. Uh, and then one last uh, poll uh, to the end that I would like to, that we would like to have because this is something that we were um, that we are really interested in now is about like where did you actually hear about this webinar? Because we had um, yeah we we're really happy to have to receive so many registrations, so many participants. So it would be um, really interesting to know. So where did you actually where did you hear about the webinar? or if you want to comment that otherwise still in the question section, that's also possible. Uh, it's really interesting for us to see. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's a pity that we cannot open up more these other channels because that, of course, that was not the majority and we don't really we couldn't add more more options, but um, that's interesting for us to see as well. Um, thank you very much. Um, I would now still show the last wait a second. Mm. Yeah, so the last slide, just for you to remember what I mentioned, oops, sorry. What I mentioned before, the three e-courses are available at the mobilityacademy.eu. So please have a look there, um, check our website. And then the next webinar for your calendars, if you're interested, is about the measure selection for SUMP in about a month, same time, um, 20th, March 20th at uh, 10 o'clock Central European time. We would be really happy to see you again or like see that you're online again and we hope that this webinar was useful for you and you're really welcome to give us uh, some feedback and you will receive as I said the wrap-up email and there will be also a link for a short evaluation because that's really important for us to develop our work and to um, to offer this support and guidance to to you and cities across Europe and now we even had participants from outside of Europe which is really great to see to offer this support that is needed yeah Thank you very much and um, have a nice day, everybody. Goodbye.